What's up everyone? This video will be a detailed look at the barrel locking system known as AF Speed Lock in this Archon Type B Gen 2. This is different than the usual tilting barrel action we see in polymer framed striker fired pistols. I'm kind of making a series of videos on this pistol. Link to a playlist is in the description. There are a couple of other good videos I will link to in the description. The first is one from Ian McCollum at Forgotten Weapons. He does an in-depth look at the Arsenal Strike 1, the predecessor to this pistol. He takes it apart, shows how it works, and goes over some of the history of the design and development and the convoluted naming of the different companies that have produced variants of it. It's a great video. I would recommend giving it a watch. The next is a very detailed 3D animation that shows the complete operation of the Strike B, another version of this pistol with the same operating mechanisms. I wanted to do something different than those two videos. I made a partially transparent 3D printed model of the slide with the top cut away over the locking block. Hopefully I'll be able to show you how this system works in a way you may not have seen before. I will also compare and contrast this breech locking system and its components with some common pistols. Let's get into it. This system is called AF Speed Lock. Instead of the barrel tilting, it just slides back and forth. What locks the barrel to the slide or locks the breech of this pistol when it's in battery is this little locking piece. As the slide travels rearward, this locking piece drops down and decouples the barrel from the slide, allowing the slide to cycle fully, extract and eject the spent casing, load the next round, etc. You can see that this locking piece cannot slide back and forth independent of the barrel. It can only slide up and down like this. The locking piece has a cam groove that rides on a cross pin, which is also the takedown pin. As the barrel, slide, and locking piece all start traveling rearward together after a shot is fired, the cross pin pulls this locking block down by its cam groove until these little projections or rails on the locking block line up with corresponding grooves in the slide. Once the rails are in those grooves, this allows the slide to travel rearward while the barrel and locking piece stop up against the frame abutment. I'm going to quickly go over the design process and challenges with this 3D printed slide. If you don't care about that, go ahead and skip ahead. But I worked really hard on this and it's going to hurt my little feelers if you don't like it. I had previously made a detailed 3D model of the slide for the bore axis comparison video. So I copied that model, defeatured and simplified it, pretty much only leaving the basic external shape and internal geometry needed to operate the locking mechanism. I bought some clear PETG for my printer, and then I did a test print. Came out looking like this. Uh-oh. I did some internet sleuthing and came across a great video from CNC Kitchen and found that for this filament to come out clear-ish, the printing parameters are very specific and a bit different than normal PETG. There was also a guide he referenced in that video that I used. I will link to both sources in the description if you're curious. After dicking around with the settings and some test prints, I got it about as clear as it's going to get. I had to cut up my simplified model into separate pieces that could be printed in the correct orientation for the best clarity in the direction I wanted to look through them. Printing this way was very slow. The prints failed multiple times and I couldn't have any overhangs or use any support material. The ass half of the slide is just printed out of PLA because I didn't need that to be clear. I super glued all these pieces together, added some reinforcements, and surprisingly it worked with minimal fitting. I know it's not the clearest, but I think with the correct lighting we can see what we need to see. This part is also cut away so we can get a clear view of the top of the locking piece. I also made some red lines with a sharpie to distinguish internal features. Let's check it out. I think it's pretty cool. First, let's look top down at the locking piece. You can see as the slide barrel and locking piece travel rearward, the block starts dropping because the cross pin is pulling it down by that cam groove. When it drops down far enough, the rails on the side of the locking piece engage with the grooves in the slide, and the slide travels rearward over the barrel and locking piece. The barrel and locking piece are up against the frame and cannot move rearward anymore. As the slide comes back forward under force from the compressed recoil assembly, this vertical face of the slide hits the locking block and starts pushing it and the barrel back forward. 
the locking block is out of the grooves in the slide at this point, and it is in this little vertical slot. And as it gets pushed forward, the cam groove rides up on the cross pin, and the block once again locks the barrel to the slide. Let's look at it from the side. Hopefully this lighting makes it clear enough. Here are the two little rails on the side of the locking piece. The top edges of these rails must clear these red lines to slip into the grooves in the slide. The block only has to drop about 80 thousandths or two millimeters to disengage the barrel from the slide or unlock the action. As the slide comes back forward, you can see this vertical red line here is the face that pushes the block in the barrel back forward and makes the block ride up on the cross pin. Let's first contrast the design of the Archon with a Glock, a very common and popular polymer frame striker fired pistol that uses a tilting barrel action. As the slide and the barrel travel rearwards together, these angled danglers engage with features in the locking block, which in this case is fixed and integrated into the grip frame. The chamber end deflects downward into the locking block, tilting the barrel and disengaging the chamber hood from the slide. The barrel stops here and the slide continues traveling rearward. As the slide comes back forward, it contacts the chamber area of the barrel and pushes the barrel forward and the chamber rises as it comes out of the locking block. It locks into the slide, they both return into battery. Next, let's compare the Archon to a pistol we're likely all familiar with, the Beretta 92. When I saw the locking system in this Archon, this was the first most obvious comparison to me. Neither of these barrels tilt, they only slide back and forth. They both have falling locking blocks. This one slides, this one pivots. These locking blocks both hang out with the barrel during the recoil cycle. Rather than a cam groove controlling the block's movement, the Beretta has a pivot point here and a little plunger at this end. As the barrel comes up against the frame, it pushes this pin in, which has a little wedge, and pushes the block down. So that these rails on the block line up with a groove in the slide, and the slide then travels rearward separate from the barrel and locking block as they stop up against the frame. Hey look, this slide is already cut away for us. Let's look at this locking block fall and go into the grooves on the slide. The last quick comparison I'll make is to the CZ75. This is a CZ75 barrel. It is a linkless design with a cam groove. The cam groove in this locking block looks a lot like the one in the CZ75 barrel. Of course, there are other firearms that have linkless cam groove style barrels. This is just the first one that popped into my head. Mr. McCollum says this AF speed lock system with the falling locking block is reminiscent of a certain Bergman pistol or maybe a Nambu or something. Very old firearms I don't know anything about. Of course, I trust his knowledge of historical firearms and their operating mechanisms, and he's probably right. But to me, this design looks like a mix of a CZ75 style cam groove and the Beretta 92 sliding barrel and locking block, combined with a striker fired trigger system and put into a polymer frame. The very first version of this pistol, the Arsenal Strike 1, was first produced in 2012, so presumably design and development was happening in the late 2000s, early 2010s. Of course, I don't know what the designers were thinking, but it would make sense to me that they may have drawn some inspiration for more contemporary and popular firearms. But if the Bergman 1910 was the first to employ a vertically traveling locking block in a semi-automatic pistol, then I suppose any design that comes after that is an iteration of that design. All right, that wraps up this video. I hope you have a decent understanding of how this uh, breech locking mechanism works now. Let me know what this uh, mechanism reminds you of. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.